Hi there, welcome to High School Maths. Today we're going to be looking at pictographs and bar charts or bar graphs. So these are two really common ways of displaying some basic information and we're going to look at how they both work. I'm going to start off with the pictograph and you can see you've got a little table here showing you some information about different people's favourite sports. And what we want to do is use that information to figure out how many people picked each one is. It's almost an, uh, an alternative way of doing something with tally marks, but a little bit more visual. So here at the bottom you can see there's a little key and it says one full stick person represents five people. So if we look at the first one, the high jump, we've, you can see we've got one full stick person, two full stick persons, stick people. That means ten in total. And that's all we're doing as we're going along. Now if we look at the second one, the long jump, you can see we've got one full stick person, but in the second one, there's some parts missing. Now what we're looking at is the stick person has five individual parts. So each part represents one person's choice. This is five, and then there's two parts here, so five, six, seven. So that's seven people picked a long, long jump. On to the 100 meters, again we're going up in five, so five, 10, 15, 20 and they're all full stick people so 20. 200 meters you can see 5, 10, 15 but this one's not quite full so we're going 15, 16, 17, 18. And the last one we've got the 800 meters. So again we're going 5, 10 and then we've just got the head there so 11. And that's how we read pictographs and they can be used all kinds of different diagrams but the idea behind them is always the same. So, what we're going to do is take that information out and we're going to plot that onto a bar graph or a bar chart. And here we've got our grid. If you've got squared paper, you don't have to draw this out, that helps a lot. So, let's have a look at this. First thing we need for our grid is two set of axes. So, one going across the way and one going up and down the way. The one going across the way is called the x axis, and the one going up and down vertically is the y axis. And these lines, we want them to have little arrows at the end to show that they keep going in either direction. Now, any coordinate grid, or sorry, any grid like this, we are going to have to be very careful how we plot the information. So we've got to think about what's going to go where. Now, we want our bars to go up vertically, so that means our five different sports have got to go along the x-axis here. Now we're going to leave a little bit of space in between each bar, but it's got to be equally spaced. So I'm going to start, I'm going to skip the first box, and then I'm going to do the first sport, which was the high jump. And I'm going to do that in these two boxes here. So each bar is going to be two boxes long, and then I'm going to leave a space of one box in between. So I'm going to leave this space, and I'm going to do two boxes again and then I'm going to do the long jump. Leave a space, two boxes, and 100 meters. Leave a space, and two boxes, 200 meters. Leave a space, and another two boxes, for the 800 meters. Now ideally what we want to do is we want to take up as much of the space in the graph as possible. We don't, everything, we don't want everything shrunk down, so we, we've taken up quite a lot of space. We've not got much space, spare space at the end here, so that's a good kind of size graph for the information we've got. We could fit another piece of information in here, but we don't have any more. Now this is the sport, so we've got to label the axis. So that's the sport that we were choosing, and then here, we've got to think about how our numbers are going to go. Now, we started at zero at the bottom, and we're talking about the lines here. So zero's on the bottom line. It, our highest number is 20. And it looks like we've got 20 boxes here, so it makes sense to go up in ones. You could go up in twos, but then that would only take you halfway up. So let's go up in ones. One, two, three. And you'll notice that each time, I'm not going to draw this for all of them, but the number is on the line. So four, five, six seven, eight, nine, and so on. This is going to get really boring to watch, so I'll try and do it fast. 
but keep it neat. And to label this axis, this is the total or the number of people. I would probably put number of people. So it's a little bit clearer. This is the number of people who picked each sport. Okay, so for the high jump, we look at that. 10 people picked the high jump. So we're going to draw a bar, and you would use a ruler for this if you've got one or a straight edge. I'm just going to use the rectangle tool. So we're going to pick a bar, and we're going to go the width of the two boxes, and then up to 10. And you can see here, that's where the line for 10 is, so that's my bar. Long jump goes up to 7, so same idea, width of the two boxes, then up to 7. And we're just doing that as we go along, nice and simple. 100 meters was 20, that was the most popular, so it's right up to the top. The 200 meters, a little less popular, it's only going up to 18. And the 800 meters was 11 people. Okay, so you've plotted all your bars. You can colour them in if you want to, so we could have all these bars coloured in different colours uh, just to make them stand out a little bit more, make it a little bit more visual. That is up to you. It does make the diagram a little bit nicer to look at. Okay, and the only thing missing now from the bar graph is the title. Okay, so we've got to write a title, and the title for this one could be People's Favourite Sports. Okay, and you've got a nice visual representation. Looking at that immediately, you can see that the 100 metres was the most popular, that had 20 people picking that, and then you can see which is the next most popular, and so on, right down to the bottom, where the long jump was least popular. So that's a little explanation of how you can use pictographs and bar graphs to the display and read information. Hopefully you found that useful. For other maths videos and resources, please visit highschoolmaths.co.uk. And if you liked the video, click that like button and subscribe. And please remember to share the video. Thanks for watching and have a math and magical day.